a really synthy strong has an ace up his sleeve. Hey guys, what's up? Gabi here from Ray Studios and today I'm very excited because I got a new drone, the Ruko F11 Gym 2. Let's do a quick unboxing. Everything comes very nicely packed and they included a very nice carrying case so you can take your drone around without being worried that you might get a scratch when you put in your backpack. Now we have a couple of Type c cables, we have a few spare screws and allen wrench and a few spare propellers. We have a quick guy. We have some other documentation alongside the user manual and this drone also came with an extra battery for extra flight time. The remote and the drone both looks really nice, I like the color. So here it is the Ruko F11 Gen 2 and the remote control both foldable. First let's quickly remove the gimbal guard so we can see that beautiful camera. It's a rather small camera but there it is, it's not bad. It's on a gimbal, on a two axis gimbal, and like I said, this is foldable, so very convenient to take around. The propellers are also foldable, so you don't need to take them out and take them in like some older drones. Uh, there it is, when this is open, you can see it right there. It ain't too big, it's more or less the size of a, I think like a little bit smaller than my Mavic Air 2S. I think it's on between a Mavic Air 2S and the original Mavic Air, and the remote which is also foldable, check this out. So this is the phone bracket, and this is right here. They don't hold the phone, they're just for hand support. Okay, so we have these very small antennas, also foldable. Take a look at that. And I guess it's time to go out and test this drone. I came to the beach to try this drone and I just realized that the beach, well, this is where it's always windy. It is very windy right now. I apologize for the noise of the waves, but you know, beautiful being on the beach, right? And this drone is so lightweight and small that I guess it's gonna be quite a test to fly with this wind. So let's give it a go. It's holding up pretty well, look at that. And it's not that noisy. I mean, it holds in position quite well. It's pretty good, let's try that out. Not bad. I mean, it can be pushed around and it's still holding the position. Okay, now let's go for a proper fly.
very satisfying first fly, but I want to test the follow mode on this one. So I'm going to ask my assistant Michael from Indonesia to run around the beach and I see if I, the drone can follow, keep up with him. So to select Michael, it was pretty easy. Just throw a square onto him after previously selected the tracking. And as you can see, Michael is running pretty fast, like crazy all over the beach. And the drone is keeping up with him pretty well. I did let that test run a little longer till Michael got tired. And then I was ready to test the gesture motion. So basically you do this gesture and it will do a countdown from three to zero and take a picture. So I've flown away till there is absolutely no more battery and I'm testing now the return to home. So it's basically going back to where I take off on its own. Actually, I didn't take off here. I took off somewhere in there and it's kind of coming back there. A little nerve wracking because I'm so close to the water right now. All right, guys, so I've been flying this drone for quite a few days and I gotta say, I'm quite impressed. Now, especially for a drone that is being sold by a company which website is rucotoy.com. But is this supposed to be a toy drone? I don't think so. It is actually pretty darn good. Definitely not a toy. So let's talk a little bit about flyability. Uh, is that even a word? Uh, I'm not sure. But anyway, how easy it is to fly. And to be honest, it's pretty darn easy. So first, it connects really fast. Second, when it connects, that connection, that image transmission into your phone is rock solid. I've flown somewhere around 300, 400 meters away, and the connection was really, really good in all case scenarios. So I, I've flown in the beach where you saw previously, and there are a lot of ships around, so they use maybe similar frequencies, and I thought that would interrupt the frequency. That never happened. I've flown in the city, no problem. I've flown in the mountains, no problem. So the image translation is so good that I would compare it to something like a DJI Mavic Air. Like, it's that good. Now, when it comes to the image quality, 4K, kind of. It's, it felt more like a 1080p that was blown out into 4K. There is a lot of digital sharpening, and there was a little bit of magenta cast into some of my videos, but easy to correct. Uh, if you are like me, a filmmaker, you like color grading, you can correct that. The digital sharpening, not so much. I would have wished to have something like a flat color profile. I mean, I know this drone is not supposed to be for filmmakers, but uh, it would have been nice to not be so digitally sharpened. Um, but other than that, it's pretty good. And you probably remember at the very beginning of this video, I mentioned that this drone have a nice up its sleeve. What I'm referring to that is that this drone doesn't have, wait for it, geofencing. You can fly anywhere. It will take off literally anywhere. And I mean, that's really cool. Okay, don't get me wrong. I don't mean for you to go out and fly somewhere where you can have an accident or do something illegal, but here is the thing. There was about a few months ago, there was a famous painter who won me to get a drone shot, so like an overhead shot of he painting on the floor. So he will paint like this big painting where the painting was laid down on the floor. And I only have to fly three to five meters in altitude on a private property in a non-flying zone. I couldn't take the job, I lost a lot of money. Now, they did not care about quality. Like, I mean, this thing would have been perfectly fine for that job. I would have get money in my pockets easy very easily. Uh, about uh, a year ago, I think last year, I got a job offer where they were building a tennis court. Now, this tennis court, huge private property. Um, they only want me to fly somewhere around 20 meters in altitude. They just wanted to film 10 days consecutive to see the transition of the construction of a tennis court on an offline zone. And it was an offline zone, literally for like less than half kilometer. I don't know, like quarter mile or something like that. So they would, I would have been absolutely safe flying at 20 meters altitude on private property. My 
my DJI drone will not take off at all. I couldn't take the job. So uh, I believe that this drone is probably gonna make me some money uh, and it's gonna pay itself. Uh, I mean, I see it from a professional point of view and I don't think the non-professional will kind of look at this, but to be honest, the footage is uh, just about okay that I can use it for these purposes too, to get some shots, um, flying a low altitude, not breaking any low because not too offensive. I mean, uh, so I'm pretty happy and keeping this drone uh, and I highly recommend it for anybody who is other playing. You want to buy a, a drone to, to maybe your son, your daughter, they can play with it. It's easy to fly. And um, for people like me that eventually might want to fly on a, you know, maybe you're inside your house. My DJI drone will immediately not take off because my house is in a non-fly zone. So a drone like this, I could just, you know, fly for fun while having GPS, maybe in your backyard or something. I could fly like in my backyard or somewhere without endanger anything. So Ruko F11 Gym 2 comes highly recommended. I hope you guys you enjoyed this video and if you have, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. I will put links in the description down below. I'm Gabby, you're watching Ray Studios and I'll catch you up on the next video.